Let me show you now a short clip from another Marx Brothers film, uh, Duck Soup, um, that demonstrates the verbal and visual accumulation of partial objects in the aesthetic illusionism of cinema. Say, who are you anyway? I don't go on much for modern art. Have you got anything by one of the old masters? Not bad. You don't happen to have her a telephone number. Say, you could be a big help to me. Where do you live? Well, it's not much of a place, but it's home. Meow! <laughs> well, I know one thing. I bet you haven't got a picture of my grandfather. Ah, uh -uh. not now. Some other time. In opposition to Groucho, who constantly talks, Hapo Marx is a mute creature, a strange hybrid between man and woman, adult and child, angel and demon. I mean, the angelic part is when he plays the harp after he's uh, named. Uh, Hapo's mute muteness is reminiscent of the slapstick comedians of the silent film era, while Groucho and Chico Marx embody the excessive chattiness of the then still young sound film age. Allegorically, one could understand the constant battles between the speech-lacking Harpo and the speech-obsessed Groucho and Chico as a battle between silent film and sound film, between the pure pantomime of silent film slapstick and the noisy verbal overload of the upcoming screwball comedy. The relationship between sound and silence is a rather precarious one in the history of comedy, as you know. While a comedian like Buster Keaton could not adapt his quasi-body to the emergence of sound, Charlie Chaplin chose to make um, an anachronistic silent films even after the fully established regime of sound. In the films of the Marx Brothers, this antagonism between silent and sound comedy is staged in all its complexity. The question I ask myself in the scene is who wins? Yeah? Who wins this battle? Is it Groucho, the master of wordplay, or Harpo, the master of appearances? In a series of magic materializations of things on his tattooed body, Harpo always seems to draw the right card to, answers, to answer Groucho's permanent questions. In a brilliant article on Lacan's Harpo, Paul Flake writes, Lacan had an interest in, in Harpo. Uh, I quote Paul, in this scene, a virtuoso lesson in semiotics Harpo's body acts as a writing tablet across which any object may inscribe itself. So Paul. And this magic body is composed of nothing other than what I call um, partial objects. Now we have um, the stills here. Yeah. At first, Harpo's own face, who are you? Yeah, is tattooed. Then a picture of a bikini girl. Um, it's quasi-cinematically animated by by Harpo's flexing muscles, this uh, is classical art. Then a telephone number, then a picture of a dog's um, stable painted on his chest. Where do you live? He lives in, the, in this dog cage. Um, <coughs> and in the most astonishing moment of the sequence, a real dog bursts out of his stomach in the exact moment when Groucho imitates a cat's meow. So meow and wow. Yeah. Uh, as a realm of pure appearances, appearances, Harpo's quasi-body is not only capable of literally converting words into things, but also of transgressing the border between representation and the real. <laughs> 